everyone has heard of this dinosaur, even if you think you haven't. Apatosaurus is what many people would call the quintessential, most well-known, typical long-necked dinosaur. This guy was everywhere, fascinating Victorians, being one of the first cartoons, any sauropod from media between 1900 and 1990, and including a little guy from my fond childhood memories, Littlefoot. But the actual animal in question has kind of been lost amongst its own popularity. So I want to actually explore what kind of dinosaur this was. Apatosaurus was first discovered in the Morrison Formation of late Jurassic North America in 1877 and was one of the many dinosaurs first described by Offneil Charles Marsh when he named Apatosaurus ajax, meaning deceptive lizard. He actually initially named the animal Atlantosaurus when the guy who discovered them, Arthur Lakes, told him of the fossils he'd found as well as alerting Marsh's rival, Edward Drinker Cope. The rivalry between these two below was like schoolboy levels of hilarious, so be sure to check out my Bone Wars video on that. After being sent more samples, O.C. Marsh settled on the name Apatosaurus because the chevrons of its tail was more similar to those of Mosasaurs. The Marsh would receive more specimens that he would assign as Brontosaurus, but these were then considered invalid for some time, but that's something I'll get into in a minute. So Apatosaurus, being found in the Morrison Formation, lived around 152 to 150 million years ago and was one of the biggest animals on land at the time. It measured in at around 30 metres or 98 feet in length and up to 33 tonnes. Now that is heavy, but like all sauropods, this isn't that heavy when you consider its size, with the animal being made lighter by the avian air sac system. Now this dinosaur was a diplodocid in the same family as Diplodocus so had an excessively long and thin whip-like tail, a long but thicker than is often portrayed horizontal neck, and a small head with peg-like teeth, mostly at the front of the mouth, ideal for leaf stripping. It differed to Diplodocus though in that it was a bit bigger and had limbs that were far more robust, with more similarities to Camarasaurus, which is why Camarasaurus has sometimes been mistaken for a juvenile Apatosaurus. So what kind of life was it living? Well, the Morris information is one that I've delved into quite a bit before, being a seasonally dry place with plenty of floodplains and river systems. Most of the plant life here was riparian, meaning they grew along the river with a patasaurus feeding on low to mid levels. Like I mentioned in my Allosaurus video, the Morris information had an unusually high amount of sauropods, including Camarasaurus, Brachiosaurus and Diplodocus. Now it's thought that this was due to migrations and the fact that most of these sauropods had varying heights and sizes, meaning that they didn't step on each other's toes when it came to feeding. In fact, the sauropod that Apatosaurus had to mostly worry about was other Apatosauruses. A 2015 study found that these guys were possibly using their necks and front toe claws for intraspecific combat with each other, probably over a mate. Other dinosaurs that shared Apatosaurus' environment include Camptosaurus, Stegosaurus, Dryosaurus, Ornithelestes, Ceratosaurus, Torvosaurus, and the apex predator of the region, Allosaurus. In fact, Apatosaurus might have actually been a victim of Allosaurus from time to time. And one more dinosaur that Apatosaurus shared its environment with was, yes, Brontosaurus. Now there is a lot of confusion around this dinosaur. If you're not really into dinosaurs, you think that Brontosaurus was a real dinosaur, and then you start getting into dinosaurs and find out that it wasn't, and you start having an existential life crisis based around your childhood because everything was a lie. Let me explain. Remember Rothneal Charles Marsh? Well, again, he had a fierce rivalry with Edward Drinker Cope, and one of the symptoms of this rivalry was wanting to outcompete each other with regards to naming new species. As a result, Marsh especially would be naming dinosaurs left, right and centre that turned out to be dinosaurs he had already described. Now the rules of taxonomy state that if two species or genera turn out to be the same animal, the one that got described first gets dibs on the name. This was one of those times. When Marsh was sent specimens of a large sauropod in 1879, he got excited by the one-up he got and described it as Brontosaurus excelsus, the thunder lizard. This awesome name caught on with the general public and their fascination with these newly discovered dinosaurs and before you knew it, Brontosaurus was the sauropod that everyone knew about. But in 1903, Elmer Riggs studied the material more closely and decided that it was way too similar to other species of Apatosaurus, and so it was unanimously decided 
that this wasn't a Brontosaurus, instead naming a new species of Apatosaurus excelsus. By this point though, it was too late and Brontosaurus had already nestled itself very comfortably into pop culture, featuring in countless forms of media, so those that weren't in the know went through life thinking that Brontosaurus was a real dinosaur. But they were wrong. Until 2015. Shock, Mateus and Benson performed a phylogenetic study in which they decided that the Diplodocid family needed some reviewing and refining. One of the changes they made was re-looking at all Apatosaurus excelsus material and finding that after having more specimens than paleontologists had before, there was enough differences to classify this as its own genus. Now another rule of taxonomy is that when this happens, you can't make a new genus. The original name is the one that sticks. So Brontosaurus was reborn in all of its thunderous glory, with most of the general public not even realizing it was gone. So that's everyone's favorite sauropod. Well, maybe not everyone's, that was a bit presumptuous, but certainly one of the more famous ones, despite the confusion around the name. Did you learn something new? If you did, be sure to leave a like and comment with any questions or discussions that you want to put forward. I love reading through the comments and interacting with you guys, so I'll be looking forward to that. And whilst that keeps me busy, I'll catch you guys next time.